Hello everybody, good Erev Shabbos. Um, it's uh, Erev Shabbos Parshas Toldos, and uh, I just got back from uh, two weeks being in America. Um, I really only have a, a few minutes, but I, I wanted to uh, address uh, the tragedy that happened this week in Hanof. Um, I uploaded a five-minute uh, clip of uh, something I was speaking about, but I got cut off in the middle, and I just really wanted to uh, just to address this uh, the situation. You know, it was a very strange day coming back from being away for the whole time, and obviously I was like happy to be home and excited to be coming home and seeing my family. But the whole uh, matzav here, the whole avira, the feeling is definitely uh, you know affected. There's no question about it. There's like a sense of availus. It's just uh, in the general. Uh, populist or from people that you interact with is uh, definitely a feeling of loss and a feeling of just you know uh, shock and uh, so I, I, I really um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to read something to you I got an email this morning from Rav Balenson uh, many of you may uh, remember of Asher Balenson um, the Shlita who was uh, Rav in Telstone and uh, he sent me an, uh, an email um, with uh, a, a letter from Rav Yaakov Hillel, uh, Shlita, who um, many of you are probably familiar with, Rav Yaakov Hillel, is uh, one of the Gadol Yisrael today, um, lives in Yerushalayim. And uh, it's a very important letter. It's very important, and I, uh, I'm not going to really say anything of my own. I really just want to read this to you. Um, it could be some of you have seen this already. Um, I just really want you to uh, hear what he has to say, and if there's anything that I add or explain along the way, so I'll, I'll make it clear that it's coming from me and not, uh, you know, nothing else. The question to the Rav. I would like to know what Hashem wants from us by sending all of these terrorist attacks. I'm afraid to go out into the street these days. Can the Rav please advise me? Thank you. Shlamit. Okay, so there's an answer from Rav Yaakov Hillel. The Gemara at the end of Sota says... That in the end of days, just before Mashiach will come, we will be placed in circumstances where we have no option but to recognize that we have nothing to rely on other than Hashem. We are currently experiencing what our sages described, as we are witnessing all over the world attacks on Klal Yisrael, specifically through the recent surge in terrorist activity. Our enemies are attacking us by driving cars into crowded places, something we have absolutely no control over. However, at the same time, Hashem has recently shown us many open miracles. Thousands of missiles were shot at Israel this summer, and many of them landed in empty spaces, which are rare in densely populated Israel. What are we meant to do in these confusing times? So he addresses it as follows. We must use these miracles and tragedies to fortify our Muna, and recognize that in truth we have absolutely nothing to rely on other than our Father in Heaven. I suggest that we can accomplish this, and at the same time merit Hashem's protection by strengthening ourselves in two areas, constant tefillah and transforming everything we do into a mitzvah. The first area we should work on is constant prayer to Hashem. While people think that tefillah is limited to three times a day, this is an error. Chazal say that one should kiss the mezuzah before he leaves his home and daven for divine assistance and guidance, both when he leaves and also when he returns. While it is true that there are many dangers lurking on the streets from our enemies who wish to destroy us, we cannot forget that a person is not free of danger even in his home. One must pray to Hashem that Hashem should safeguard every step he takes. In addition to asking Hashem to protect us, we must continuously thank Him for all He has given us, health, family, food, and all of our needs. As bad as the situation is now, there are still more people who die in car accidents and in terrorist attacks. We cannot be fooled into thinking that there are safe areas where we are not in need of special divine protection. At times, people are even killed at a street crossing. Whatever Hashem wants is what will happen, and our job is to continue to pray for the best and to do tshuva. So he's saying this is an important, uh, an important point about this, that uh, he's saying that the types of attacks that are happening are so random and so impossible to protect against, impossible to protect against, what are you going to do? Take away all the, you know, all the cars from the Arabs and all the makolet with knives and take away the knives. It's, it's, what, what can you do? So he says, Hashem has created a situation where it's obvious that we have no one to rely on other than Hashem. And he says, this is what Chazal tells us will happen, the Iktus of the Mashiach. Chazal offer us further advice as to how we can merit Hashem's constant protection before leaving our homes. Shluchi mitzvah, people who travel to do a mitzvah, are protected from harm. Therefore, we should make ourselves into shluchi mitzvah, 24-7. For example, if a lady is going to buy food for Shabbos or to buy clothing for her family, she is fulfilling the mitzvahs of honoring Shabbos or Yom Tif, uh, as well as chesed, and is considered to be a shliach mitzvah, who merits divine protection. Before she starts one of these activities, she should verbally express that she is doing it with intent to do a mitzvah, for this strengthens her status as a shliach mitzvah. In truth, every step a person takes can be a mitzvah. You could smile at people, say hello, give someone a lift in a car, or give him directions. So too, if a woman's husband learns Torah, she is a partner in his Torah study, and this protects her. Even one who supports Torah has guaranteed protection. 
Chazal warn us from walking in dangerous places, such as walking under a wall that is about to collapse. Such activity can bring harsh judgment upon oneself. Therefore, you should avoid entering neighborhoods where our enemies live. If you must be in a crowded place nearby where our enemies are present, you should take precautions. However, if, God forbid, attacks take place, this should not weaken our amunah. Hashem, in His great wisdom, has His own calculations and knows what is best for us. Even if we do not understand, we must trust that it is all for the ultimate good. Following these two directives of constant fila and making ourselves shluche mitzvah at all times will definitely build our amunah and bitachon and help us recognize that in truth we have absolutely nothing to rely on other than our Father in Heaven. If we fulfill this condition, then hopefully we will merit to see the revelation of Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our days. Now he continues. If God forbid there is a gzera, and Hashem in His infinite wisdom decides that people should be killed, even if a person involved, is involved with mitzvos, even if he is in shul, davening nates, or learning Torah, Hashem's will will be carried out. No matter which mitzvos we are involved with, all of these assurances become irrelevant. In other words, he's saying the idea of shliach mitzvah in nizakim, that's like a, it's like a, like a form of hishtadlos. It's a form of, you know, just like taking medicine uh, we take when we're sick. So he's saying, Chazal tell us, there's a spiritual protection a person has when they're doing a mitzvah. But just like a, a person can have the best doctor and the best medicine, but if it's the gzerim and the that that person is supposed to be taken, so, so too a person has to have the best medicine and the best doctor and be in a talisman fillin and davening shmona esrei, and if Hashem decides to take him, Hashem is going to take him. This can even take place with, the Rav continues, this can even take place with great tzaddikim. The Gemara says that when the Midas Haddin is unleashed, it is because of the sins of the wicked, and yet it attacks first the most righteous. What about the promise to guard Shluch Mitzvah? What about Tefillah? What about the fact that the Torah protects and saves lives? We see from this Gemara that when there's a Gzera, everything that we advised above does not apply. So again, this is my addition. We have to do what we have to do. We have to try our best, just like in every year, Shtadlis, we have to try our best to be safe and to be protected. So we're saying physically and also spiritually. But again, that's, there's, no, there's no sense of, uh, then it can't happen. If Hashem, if Hashem wants something and needs something to happen, it's going to happen. When Moshe Rabbeinu saw the brutal death of Rabbi Akiva, Moshe asked Hashem, how can it be that someone who is the greatest Gadol in Torah should be treated like this? Hashem re- replied, be quiet, I know why. The reason Hashem told Moshe to be quiet was because only Hashem can fathom why these tragic events take place. And there's no point in discussing this with even the greatest of human beings. But in truth, everything is for the good. There are very deep reasons which the human mind cannot comprehend. The Navi asks, how can there be good for the Rasha and bad for the Tzaddik? Uh, tzaddik for Adol. Ramchal, in his Sefer Derech Hashem, writes that there are two separate Hanhagos through which Hashem rules over his world. Hanhagas HaMishpat follows the simply understood rules of good and bad and reward and punishment as laid down by the Torah. When a person does good, he is rewarded, and when he is evil, he is punished. Everything makes sense. That's the Hanhagas HaMishpat. However, when it comes to Hanhagas HaYichud Vamazal, or what we've referred to uh, in the past in, in videos, uh, well, anything goes. There could be a holocaust where even young babies and tzaddikim are brutally murdered. When Hashem runs the world according to Hanhagas HaYichud, He conducts it in accordance with His final goal. Only He in His infinite greatness knows the reasons behind what's happening and how it is all for the eventual good. At this stage, human beings cannot understand what is happening. For this reason, we see that bad happens to the tzaddikim and the rishayim have it good. The bottom line is that Hashem will relate to the world at any time as He sees fit for the ultimate good. The goal of our enemies is to terrorize us and cause us to live in a constant state of panic. In my opinion, as far as setting up guards in public places, this depends on an evaluation of the police. If they necessitate that every public place or, or of education or prayer where many people congregate needs extra security, then we must do so. And after all the precautions, all we can do is trust in Hashem and hope that He saves us. So oh, it's sharing just very important uh, perspective on this, uh, that again, you know, these are impossible things to, to understand you know, for tzaddikim, for people incredibly connected with Klal Yisrael, in Eretz Yisrael, in Chutz Laretz, and on so many levels and in so many ways. And, uh, you know, it, it, we lived through a gazera. I mean, we lived, you and I, and all of Klal Yisrael that was affected by this, we, we've all experienced a, a gazera in Hashemayim. And uh, when a gazera happens like this, the Malachi Ashari ask, and, and they also can't understand. And uh, we have to uh, keep davening, keep trying our best, be mechazik ourselves, mechazik ourselves in Amuna, mechazik ourselves in our mitzvos, in a tefillah, in constant tefillah, Hashem should take away these gzairas. Hashem should uh, let it be like Chazal say that the uh, Mises Tzadikim is a kapara for the door. It's an atonement for the generation. It should, it should be. There should be enough of this already. Enough. Enough. Nobody else cares about us. Uh, I hope everybody can see that so clearly now from the media, from the politics and the world. Nobody cares about us. Nobody's going to do anything for us. 
that we only have Hashem to rely on. Mr. Hashem, Hashem should carry us all the way. I'd be as cold, Tzedek. Thank you.